All right, everybody, if you're here for trains, you're in the right place. If you're interested in planes, I'm afraid you've got the wrong room. <laughs> what other modes of transport should we have? Buses? No love for buses here, I'm afraid. Automobiles? No, no cars. No. Trains, actually. Walking, yeah, riding, no. Um, Uh, right, so uh, let's begin. So us, uh, my name is Henry and I run a diversity data startup. And I'm Dale and I'm a backend developer, uh, actually working freelance and potentially looking for new roles. So I've got a role, let's, let's chat. <laughs> um, so that's us. Um, and Dale, you live in Bristol. I live in Bristol, I just uh, moved into Bristol. Uh, bought a brand new house, place called St. Wildbergs. The most exciting thing about my house uh, apart from the fact that it came at quite a good price, was it's near a train line. Um, we're about 100 metres from a train line in red, uh, and even better than that... Uh, you That's a life-size train. Life-size train, not to scale. <laughs> not to scale. I've never seen one of those actually come by. But you get a direct line of sight uh, from uh, the lounge window to, to the train line. So as a frequent visitor to Dale's house, that is his front room right there. And that's the view. Sorry if, for the mess. Yeah, sorry for the mess. He just moved in, and yeah, he's going to get rid of those grills because it's not a prison cell. It's not a prison. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So that's zooming into the um, into the window, and if we open the window, there's the view. And and if you wait patiently, or every five minutes, uh, you can see. Yeah, if you look straight ahead, there's there's there's, there's the train line. We're just making out. And the train. <laughs> this is not a real photo. Again. What? Oh. And there's the other. You also get behind that kind of lovely, uh, what type of tree it is, like purple tree. You also get uh, not a purple train, no, but a. Uh, the, 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 the other train line. <laughs> and I'm sorry that though we couldn't make the rendering work behind the tree, and there wasn't a budget. <laughs> okay, uh, so, um, so with the train going past every few minutes, you what have you wondered? I often wondered for every train that goes by, kind of what's the story of each of each train? Uh, where does it come from? Where is it going? type of train is it? You can tell. Um, all that kind of thing. So I was kind of curious, um, and I looked for an answer to, to that. Uh, and anyone that kind of knows a bit about what is interesting kind of trains and train data, uh, you might know the Real Time Trains website, uh, which <laughs> provides the answer. Um, my train line, the bit I can see, is between two stations. Uh, it's uh, in between two stations. There is a junction uh, where the track kind of diverges off. Um, and you can look at the Real Time Trains uh, website specifically focused on that junction. And I'm 30 seconds down the track from that junction, so more or less you can kind of work out what's, what's going to come by at any point. And that might sound great, and when we first saw it we thought this is great, but quite quickly, especially when I was uh, visiting one weekend, we got fed up. Uh, for, for three reasons really. First, we had to keep on pressing refresh for every train that went by. Uh, they're working out the correct order. So again, anyone that uh, uses trains will realise that they don't often run as expected. Um, in fact, a particular problem with this output is that it is displayed in chronological order according to the planned departure time. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> delays. There are delays sometimes. So as we can see over here, where you can't see, but I take my word for it, uh, we've got uh, there's a train in the middle, which, which should, those trains should come in order one, two, three, but in fact the middle one is due to come first. Because uh, the other two are running, the first one running late. But it's actually more complicated than that because even if, even if the trains are in the right order, sometimes there are trains that never actually turn up. <laughs> Ghost trains. <laughs> uh, so obviously, it can, like trains that are kind of cancelled, uh, passenger trains. But this is a particular problem uh, with freight trains, uh, which are often booked to run at a particular time, but only run you know when there's enough kind of freight to, to be pulled from home A to B. So this kind of presumably coal train was going to run from Bridgewater to, to Crewe yesterday. Um, well, I wasn't waiting for it to come by. But if I had been waiting for it to come by, I'd have been disappointed because the train only runs when the customer, the coal company or whatever, uh, decide they want to run it. So it never, that one actually never, never happens. So we've got to filter out those trains from, from the output. It all gets a bit kind of annoying. So we, as problem solvers, as um, entrepreneurs and developers, we thought, well, we've got to have a solution for this, surely. We can, we can, do, we can do better. And well, we did find it, didn't we, Dale? Well, we 
we, we did find it, yeah. Um, sort of. Uh, what we did find was, uh, well, we might recognize a kind of board like this. Um, in fact, anyone that's traveled by train here will probably recognize it being at the train station. This one isn't at the train station. This is in someone's house. <laughs> you can buy these boards and put them up in your house. Um, who would have thought there'd be a market for that kind of thing? So I've just been a lot, a lot of train gigs. Wow, wow. wow. Well, well, that's a lot cheaper than the railway boys in France. Well, <laughs> it, it turns out that there appears to be a market. This fantastic website that looks like it's sort of from 100 years ago uh, can serve your needs very nicely. Uh, no, they're sold out. They're sold out right now. They could, in theory, they could. Um, but it's a bit dear. You know, it starts at 300. Uh, I think that says plus shipping, parcel force 48 if you need it immediately. If you need your train hit immediately. So, um, uh, that's out, out of budget. That's out of budget. But not only is it out of budget, it's got some other problems too. Yeah, so, so at the time of, <laughs> at the time of here when we looked into this, um, it wasn't exactly a plug and play. Um, you bought the board, waited, you know, for it to turn out by parcel force or other couriers are available. Uh, then you, when you got it home, you had to take the back off. Uh, connect some sort of cable to the back, have a Windows computer, uh, go through lots of kind of setup stuff, uh, make sure you've got the right drivers installed for the Wi Fi, um, type in your Wi Fi, and then you finally get to the point where you can select a station that you want to replicate. And even then, I don't live at a station, I live between two stations, so that wouldn't quite have worked. But um, yeah, so we thought, well, surely we could do better. Um, uh, surely we could open source a train board. You know, this data's out there. Can't be that hard, can it? Um, and we think we actually got the tools. We've got uh, Raspberry Pis, and we've got um, uh, Python. But then the question was, well, when? Yeah, so we both kind of, you know, had day jobs. Um, you know, running a, running a tech startup isn't, it's no, no easy feat. Um, and it's intense to work in open data isn't always there either. Um, so we're kind of quite busy. We kind of thought, when are we actually going to do this project? Um, you know, in Bristol, um, when are we going to do it? So we decided that we would go on a hack holiday. <laughs> what better place than to build uh, some kind of information uh, display for a train to go right past my house than going to Madrid? <laughs> <laughs> But why? But why? Well, we figured there were um, three things. Why do I want to build it? Why do I want to build it? Yeah, three things. So the first is we wanted to learn about hardware and develop our general coding skills. So um, we uh, primarily are in open data and software. So that hardware we thought would be an interesting opportunity. And so like a lot of people, I've had a Raspberry Pi line and come for quite a lot of time. It's kind of in dust or not under a, in a cupboard. It's sort of a good time to kind of use that. Um, but as well as the kind of tech stuff, we thought it would be a good time to spend some time together and explore somewhere new. And um, third, eat lots of sweets. Third, row on a lake. Third, ride an electric bicycle. <laughs> third, go to a train museum in Spain and ride an app for a British train. Yes, the meta was not lost on us. <laughs> uh, so we started with a pretty grand plan that we were super excited about. Yeah, so this kind of uh, new kind of you know, iteration on that 300 pound board that you can buy was going to be uh, open source, as we kind of talked about before, so anyone could kind of use it. Lots of people we thought would buy train lines. Um, you could, the idea was you could connect it to a large LCD display board, um, and you could attach that display board to your wall. In my case, I thought, wouldn't it be great if we put it you know, right above the window, uh, lots of kind of flashing lights, what kind of thing, when the train's about to come and it showed kind of the direction uh, which way it's going to come to and from. And then offer it so you could have easy Wi-Fi setup. Uh, so you didn't have to unplug the back of the box, plug it into your PC to give it the Wi-Fi and then access. And so we thought we could do all those things. But uh, as some of you probably have already thought, <laughs> guys, what are, you, what are you talking about? That's too much for three days in the trip. Uh, get real. Uh, so we rescoped. And we rescoped to something much, much, much simpler, uh, which is this. This is our scope. Uh, to display a countdown, the number of minutes to the next train, uh, and then the uh, origin and the destination of the next train. And so that was the um, that was the destination that we set ourselves uh -huh. um, for the end of our holiday. 
And to do that, we needed both, obviously, hardware and software. Yeah, so for hardware, I talked about yeah, those, those Raspberry Pis, which you know, probably a lot less have got the, the lying around. Uh, I had one B. Uh, Henry, you managed to get a, uh, a free uh, Raspberry Pi wireless one. Yeah, shout out to the founder of uh, Pi Marini, who, um, after pitching this idea to him at last year's PyCon, kindly gave me a, a free uh, zero, and he'll get another shout out in a minute. Um, and we've got the SD card, and another shout out to him now in terms of this LCD display. So uh, we were um, inspired by Kirk's talk last year on trains, um, and he was using an Inky Fact, which is an electronic ink display, uh, but they weren't available when we uh, picked up this project. So instead, uh, we bought this display Otron hat, that I'm going to tell you lots of technical details about in a couple of minutes. It clips right back on, it clips right onto that, the GPIO pins of the, of the Raspberry Pi, and if you've got like a model B kind of type, it looks really, well, it's more kind of flush than the smaller zero ones where it all kind of sticks out. But yeah, it goes onto the top. And in terms of software, um, we knew we just had to kind of source and display and then you know, present, present the data. So we're going to um, explain the source bit and then the display bit does and do source and now I'm going to do display. Uh, so first thing we realized in sort of sourcing the data was that there wasn't a kind of easy uh, API for the data we specifically wanted. So you can quite easily get data for a particular station, um, but not for a point between stations. Not for a junction. Not for a, the, the, the junction or, or other, other kind of points, yeah. Um, so we went back to good old fashioned screen scraping of the uh, real time trains website. Um, in terms of kind of the actual kind of, we've got some sort of simplified kind of code of what we did. So the first thing we wanted to write was kind of function to like test the connection. Um, just kind of defines a kind of domain and uses OS system uh, to kind of return a boolean of, of did it manage to ping a particular kind of address. The code for this is I'm going to get help. We'll, we'll share the link with you. I'll take a longer look. Um, then we had to kind of generate the URL uh, for a particular time of day uh, to go to that site, uh, get the um, uh, all the trains that are due to come at a particular kind of point in time. Uh, and then we have to go pass the actual train data. So we have to take a line uh, from the real-time trains website that represented one train uh, and turn that into some sort of Python data structure. I think there's kind of a, there's a list of dictionaries that we kind of chose and, and date time the, uh the actual time rather than the expected time that's meant to come. Uh, they have a habit of uh, putting uh, the time in four digits and then a sort of uh, a fraction at the end, so like one over two representing half of a minute. So dealing with all that kind of stuff is uh, was, was good fun as well. But fun as well. And we had to also deal with um, uh, the trains, the ghost trains, etc., etc. So this boolean here, the uh, functions that I then wrote to interpret. So at this point, we've got a uh, list of dictionaries coming through, or a dictionary with some lists in it coming through, um, and we need to display that. Uh, but in order to display, we need to turn the damn um, uh, machine on, the display Ultron machine. So there's a library very easy to use that you can uh, download and load into the Raspberry Pi called Do That. So to turn on the backlight, you just do Do That uh, RGB and that turns it to bright white. Then set the contrast so it's nice and clear, and then display connecting. So on boot, the Raspberry Pi sends a command to the hat saying connecting. Cool, it's saying something now. That's our start. Next thing we need to do is present that data that uh, Dale has prepared so nicely. So this is a mocked up display of Tron hat. So before taking you through kind of how it displays, let me just run through how this screen works. So it's 16 characters long uh, times by three. And it accepts string inputs. So if you want to write one minute from Bristol to Bath, or whatever it might be, you don't send it a string um, line one, one minute, line two, Bristol, line three, Bath. No, no, no. You send it a 16 times by three length string. So therefore, to display what I just showed you, I need output in output to do that. So I wrote a, a function to do the padding. Turns out that in Python 3.6, the F format, the F in front of the string can do this magic much more easily than uh, I did it. But refactor, um, refactor, refactor, <laughs> refactor. And another refactor. Oh. Another refactor is you don't need that at the end, strictly speaking. Okay, um, so everyone follows that. Uh, one minute crystal bath. 
The final step was to refresh, because obviously we don't want that same train the whole time. So pretty simple there, we put the, you know, put the machine to sleep for a few seconds. Got to clear the display. Can't just send it another, like, please do this other thing. You need to clear it first, and then write refreshing, and then display the next screen. So it says refreshing, and then the next train. Cool. So by this point, we've got the data coming in, scraped, passed, and then presented to display in the way that it looks. So drum roll. So yeah, the moment that I'm sure everybody is really excited for, <laughs> we're here. and the moment that all presentations fail on is the demo. It's not going to fail. Oh, it is going to fail. No. Oh, it's going to work. Depending on <laughs> Wi-Fi. Yes. All right. So here we are. Pause. It's currently sitting on my windowsill. It's coming straight from your house. Yeah, it's coming straight. Yeah. Lively. Live feed. Live feed. Live feed. Is there again? Is there okay. there right now? The train is due. <laughs> Is it going to be a train? 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 Oh! Yay! 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 Bonus prizes if you can tell us what type of train that is. <laughs> <laughs> right, that works. <laughs> wow, well, well, the video actually worked. Um, that's that's a prize. So, um, hopefully you've learned something about trains, something about um, uh, scraping data, interpreting it, and presenting it. But we want to leave you with three kind of almost high-level takeaways that we have, um, oh, two and then one shout, um, that we have from this project. And the first is to challenge yourself um, to learn through a side project. You know, um, this time last year, we got this advice. And yeah, it's really, really great. I learned much more about tester and development than I ever knew before. And kind of got to hear lots of Dale's experiences in terms of his own coding work that I would never have otherwise. But I think that ooh, the key point is not to just do it on your own, because frankly it's bloody lonely. <laughs> Get a friend or two. You don't have to go to um, um, Spain, but yeah, <laughs> do it. Uh, yeah, can't, uh, yeah, once you found someone in a, a project that you're kind of interested in, um, yeah, can't ask them to actually do it. Uh, you know, I'm sure we're all pretty busy. Um, I mean, for us, like actually going on holiday kind of uh, made it a good kind of a hack kind of event. Obviously, not all hacks have to happen in on holiday. You can do it at home as well. But yeah, carve out a particular kind of point in time uh, to, to work on your project. <laughs> and before we get to the final takeaway, we'll be pleased to hear we've already got our next hack holiday booked. <laughs> <laughs> Scope TBC. Yeah, Scope TBC. Um, if there are any PyCon organizers, we'll do a, another um, pitch for the next hack holiday presentation. Um, just try and get in there. Right, and the final takeaway is uh, we'd love you to help us to improve uh, this software. Uh, the, uh, it's on its own little sort of open source or open company, open board. Um, so yeah, get help forward slash open board, forward slash open board. Bit of a debate whether to put a dash and capitalise, but you can get there for now. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for really appreciating this talk. It's uh, such a pleasure to give it. And I hope we've left you with some inspiration to get cracking with the side project. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, of course, if you live near a train line, you're welcome to kind of download this code and, 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 and use it. Um, and yeah, we'd love to come up here hear kind of questions really. There is time left over. Yep. Who's got first question? Karina. <laughs> Not planted or anything. <laughs> How did you know it was working if you were in Madrid? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was a flaw in that <laughs> process. Um, we uh, set up a webcam. <laughs> <laughs> Looking out the window. It did uh, work. It did work, and we were very excited, I think, once we built that first kind of output, and we were just sort of you know, staring at that webcam, see what kind of happens. Uh, it was quite no webcam, so it was uh, pretty grainy. So I think it was also at night, I think. <laughs> we had no idea if it worked or not. Yeah, ideally do it, um, do it, you know, where, where you can see the kind of output. <laughs> oh, got kind of a, a, a feedback. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's how we did it. Right, lots of questions. I'm going to go move my way back. So, your web scraping, <clears throat> can you just briefly take me through what you use to do the web scraping? Yeah. Because I've never done that before. Okay, that's one for Dale. Let me come back to yeah, web scraping is um, like often features in kind of uh, side projects. Um, so here we use the request library to uh, yeah, make the request return the HTML, um, and then I think we use Beautiful Soup to then 
get the right, select the right class HTML. I think we use like CSS select as the things. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Cool. cool. Thank you. Can I come back to me? Uh, Mine was the same question. Oh, same. Had a question? Um, hi. Uh, I found this talk uh, surprisingly interesting and highly entertaining. I didn't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I didn't write the description when I got there. <laughs> um, and that comes the question part, which is do you have plans to go uh, even further and realize your original dream by being a uh, uh, LAV board? <laughs> okay, so <laughs> let's do some customer validation because we were a bit skeptical there's actually really much of a market for that. <laughs> so, I mean, we just heard from Kirk that. Am I going backwards or forwards? Well, if that's on LED, I would probably buy it. It's so cool. Yeah, so. Okay, right, so. Uh, I think I'm almost. Uh, too many slides, but it's a good work, good work, right, right, you find it, okay, so, this one, that's it, okay, so, okay, Could, would anyone actually spend some money on something like this? I think it's a very cool thing, okay, okay, let's do hands up first, would anyone spend some, I'm like, okay, we've got some customers, right, we're going to send a piece of paper around for your emails, and if you don't spend 300 quid, then you're not allowed back at Python. <laughs> so you're saying? Well, if I'm going to catch a train, I want to see like how many minutes I have to yeah. catch the train. So okay. like, I would, you know, maybe it's not for a train, train, but like maybe if it's TFL, like because I live in London, yes. I can know like how, like can I catch that like yeah, yeah, yeah. or something like that. But, but how important is it to you that it like is on your <laughs> wall and looks like a train board? Yeah. Like is that like critical? <laughs> I think the customer is right, but sometimes the customer would be happy with connecting a T a uh, an old LCD to a Raspberry Pi that refreshes yeah. real time trains. Or that, it like it. it's, it's a talking piece, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's the it's antique of the future. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, the is, if you have something like Tamsin, their trains are so infrequent and they cancel them. Yeah, but they lie like hell on their actual website. So you can't really tell. Them the but is real time trains more accurate then? I, I've never heard of real time trains, so I'm okay. going to check it. You check it out, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's driven by the network rail timetable output, so it's, it's very accurate. Okay. I bet it is actually. Tensely, it's just basically. You, you, if you look at it, you know more than the people at the station, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Um, so. Okay, it looks like there's some work. No, gentlemen, let's get the. Let's we get a piece of paper here, right? I've got a pen. Okay, we'll send, the, send the paper around. The customers, great. Um, so the, 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 the challenge. Sorry, to, the, the, answer, the, the challenge to give you a bit more colour. It's no obligation. No, no obligation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the well, I can join your hackathon. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, great. The challenge is um, uh, plugging into these displays. Because these displays are generically made um, uh, in the Far East, and they don't have a very simple to use library to access them, and then daisy chaining them together is really difficult. So actually, this is made up of like lots and lots of twelve by twelve. This this one. Yeah. 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 So this is this, this will be made up of like several different like all like chunked together. Yeah. yeah. So to make a long one. And so that's the challenge, but keep on passing that paper around. Um, there's a question here, and then we might have time for one or two more. So, there hasn't really been a question so far, but you've got to expand this. You, you realise that the line outside your house is having two more lines put in it in November. Yes, it is. There's going to be twice as many trains running, yeah. so you're going to have to expand it. But it should like, still show them in the right order. It though. should show them in the right order, apart from when they both come at the same time. Oh, oh that's, that's, yeah. My, 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 question, my question is, um, have you enjoyed doing this? And what no, we hate it. <laughs> <laughs> and what was the most difficult part of it? Was it finding the data, or was it taking that data and using it in something useful? Uh, so for me, um, working with the hardware was probably the most kind of difficult kind of bit. I mean, I've done a lot of like, like date passing was kind of part of my job <coughs> for quite a long time. So that doesn't phase me as much. If you're kind of brand new to it, the kind of scraping stuff might be more kind of tricky, so like turning the data getting it in the right kind of format. But for everyone, like everyone's got different kind of skills. Um, but for me, it was, I think, like working with the hardware, selecting the hardware, doing the scoping on like what kind of 
uh, display board which should be you know, by first. Like, should we you know, spend a lot of time investing into spend a lot of time with the drivers for like all these things? Uh, or should, and, and that's why we kind of scale back to like something actually plugs into the pipe. So for me, the hardware bit was the most tricky. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, a 10 second question and then we're going to break and anyone else that wants to talk just come for that. done this over Christmas because at Christmas when you're screen scraping, you usually get like Rudolph the reindeer going across. The <laughs> <laughs> uh, we did have a problem when um, uh, daylight savings time ended. <laughs> that was a Madrid uh, BST problem. Okay. Um, well, thank you so much, everybody. If you've got more questions or thoughts, uh, come up to the front. Um, if you've not already signed away your email address to be contacted for the rest of your life, uh, how to buy Ros for these things, then please put it down. Who's got the paper now? We want to build something, by Great. the way. We, we want to build something that actually, not that has to look like this, that wants to like, that, that, that could like meet your kind of specific case, use cases. Yeah. Well, yeah. It easy so you can, you can be in our, in our effects group. Anyway, thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of the conference. You've been great. Woo!